Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy and in today's video, we will take a look at the latest update for Android 16. Now this one is Android 16 beta 4.1. So beta 4 came out back on April 17th, 4.1 just a couple days ago on May 13th. And this one's really just giving us bug fixes, which kind of tells me that they are at the end of the line for this update to be pushed out as a full official stable launch. So in today's video, we will take a look at this specific update here, letting us know which bugs have been fixed. We'll also take a look at the timeline. So this way you can see exactly when this is supposed to be fully launched, which taking a look at this right now, it should be launched during this month of May. And then we'll also take a look at several other changes that has come along the way of this update here for Android 16. And I'm talking about what we've seen from beta one, from beta two, beta three, and now beta four for this full entire Android 16 beta experience. It's about nine different changes or features or updates that I'm going to share in this video. If you missed all of the previous updates that went along with Android 16 beta. Topic number one, let's just talk about specifically what came from this update right here, which is Android 16 beta 4.1. Now, again, this one's mostly just bug fixes, so it's not going to take long to go through this list. They fixed an issue that impacted the haptic performance, fixed an issue that impacted 4K video recording at the four time telephoto, fixed the weather app disappearing. They fixed an issue where the microphone indicator is stuck on, fixed an issue where audio fails to play from the NDK fixed a constant battery drain issue. They fixed a black navigation bar appearing on transitions. Then they fixed the Google app crash when loading a website. And now to take a look at the timeline of Android 16. So right now we are on beta four. I first downloaded and installed the Android 16 beta one back on January 23rd. And then with the third update, which was from March, that was the platform stability. Then you also had April, which is the one that we just had not too long ago. And then now we are nearing the final release. So I wouldn't be surprised to see another update during the month of May because it is fairly early during the month of May as it is May 15th. And now to show off some of the features that we have gained throughout this full experience of Android 16 from beta one through four. If you liked the predictive back when it comes down to the swipe gestures, as you can see, you can see the predictive back of where you would go if you were to go back a screen, which this just shows you the home screen. Now you can do this with those three buttons of your navigation buttons on the bottom. So if you scroll down and you take a look at your display in touch, and then you scroll on down and then you take a look at navigation mode. As of right now, if I was to swipe on back, you will be able to see a small little indicator of where we are about to go to for the next screen. You can also do that with your three button navigation. All you'd have to do is press and hold on the back and it's gonna show you the screen that you are about to go to once you release it. Now, here's the thing, if you don't want to go back, you just kind of swipe up and then you release it and you're not gonna go back a screen. So you are now able to have that predictive back, not only just with the gesture navigation, but also with the three button navigation. Now there is one little small thing I'll throw in here. If you go inside of your gesture navigation and when you first turn it on, the first time you play with gestures, it gives you a demo. You can now actually try the demo again after the fact. I guess some people wanted to go through the demo again, or maybe they bypass it in the beginning and they can't remember all of the gestures to use when it goes from back or into home. Feature number two, this is another way to get into your application list. Now for me, all I have to do currently is swipe up. Now, one of the ways that was just added is that you can press and hold on your home screen and then you have your apps list right here and you just tap it and it brings it on in. So there could be some situations where a press and hold and then a tap is a little bit easier for you to get into your application list than swiping up. Feature number three gives you additional features and options when it comes down to your recent application page. So here's my recent applications, anything that has been opened up and then I closed. If you swipe up from the bottom and you hold for just a split second, it'll show you your recent apps. Now, if you tap on the icon, originally it was app info, split screen and pause app. Now you have screenshot, select and close. Now the screenshot and select is repeat from what is there on the bottom. So whichever one is easier for you to reach with your thumb, maybe the way you're holding on your phone, it's easier to reach it up here. If not, maybe it's easier to reach here. 
and we'll see if they make any changes or keep both of these spots when it comes down to the full stable official launch but i you know it doesn't hurt to have it in a couple areas the other one that you have is close so instead of you having to swipe up to get rid of this application you know very similar to get into your application list because beforehand you know you can press and hold and you open up your application list this is almost the same concept if you don't want to swipe your phone and you want to do a tap and a tap now you just closed out of it but those are those additional features on the recent application page now next up i'm going to share some images with you just because i don't think i can do this right now officially but you have live notifications that you're able to interact with when it comes down to uber or food delivery as well as navigation so this right here is that live notifications that if you're familiar with my channel here i cover samsung usually and this is where you're able to see your live notifications when it comes down to the media player like youtube or youtube music or spotify so right there it's going to show you uber food will be delivered at 9 40 5 p.m. Now, if you were to tap on that icon, it's going to show it to you like this. It's going to be a floating window on the very top, and it'll stay there showing you everything that's happening from the order is in to preparing of the food to, you know, bringing it to the car, driving it to your place and everything like that. You can see, you know, when it's going to be delivered, when everything has started. Uh, and then if you were to look at it from your navigation bar, so if you just swipe down, you'll be able to see this way. So again, the exact same thing as the live notifications on the Samsung phones with Samsung One UI 7. And here you'll have the exact same thing here for your uh, you know, Uber, your food delivery, as well as navigation. Topic number five is surrounding where you're able to store all of your contacts that you add into your phone. So maybe you don't know this, but maybe your, all of your contacts are being saved directly to your device and it's not being backed up via cloud, which is your Gmail account. So all you'd have to do now is if you go inside of apps, then inside of apps, this is where you have all of your general stuff like default apps, your assistant, well, this is where it kind of makes sense, your contact storage. So this is where if you tap on this option here, it's going to show you all of the Gmails associated with your phone. You select which, which Gmail you want all of your contacts to be stored in and synced with, and that is it. You can choose your phone, but that is highly suggested to not do as something could happen to your device. You get it lost or stolen, and now you lost all of your contacts and it's not being synced or saved. So make sure you choose an option for whichever Gmail you would like your contacts to be stored. Feature number six that was added to Android 16 is the double press of your side key, which will now be linked with, if you would like, your Google Wallet. Now, originally it was just with your camera and how you can change this if you go inside of your settings, then you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna take a look at system. And then inside of system, you wanna go to gestures. Now, this is what happens when you double press the power button or side key. Right now it is turned on and it's set to Google Wallet. Now, originally it was set up to camera, kind of depends on maybe which shortcuts you have on your lock screen or something like that. But this is where you have wallet. So if you pay or you have cards or memberships or something like that, uh, you might want to switch it over into wallet as it is a newer feature in Android 16. Feature number seven, this is where you can change your regional preferences. So maybe you have traveled abroad and you wanted to change, you know, your Celsius to Fahrenheit or uh, kilometers to miles or whatever. This is where if you scroll down and then you take a look at system inside of system, this is where you go to language and region. And then as you scroll down, this is your regional preferences. And there is four options you can choose from now rather than just one or two. You can choose your region. This is also where you can change your temperature if you want it to be just by default of wherever you are, if you want it to be Celsius or Fahrenheit. Here's your measurement system. If you want it to be US, UK, metric, or use default, again, uh, dependent on your location. And then also first day of week. You can use default or you can change it to either Sunday or Monday, whichever makes the most sense to you. Feature number eight, I put this one towards the end of the video because this is just the Easter egg. This is where it talks about, you know, the little Easter egg that you have with your Android versions. So with Android 16, you have those 16 stars, but also this is where you have your little asteroid game or your little pilot game, pretty much. This is your spaceship and you get a fly and you can find different stars. But in Android 16, along the way, I think it was like beta two or beta three, you had the autopilot. So you have autopilot that is engaged. It's flying somewhere. It's going to take you somewhere. And one of the things that's pretty cool is that in the background, you'll be able to see your little autopilot towards the very top. And here we go. We are going to the asteroid or Astro Theta 779. That is the target. 
So it's going to slow us down and make us land on this little uh, Astro Theta 779. Let's see. I think it's trying to... Oh, there we go. It is positioning for the best landing. And there we go. That is it. I'm going to turn off the autopilot and get out of this little game. And now closing out this video, I want to share with you the animation of what you would see when you unlock your phone for the first time or your phone is turned off or restarted. You have all of those little shadows, the whites and the blacks moving around, kind of a liquify kind of movement or cloud movement. And that was the last thing I wanted to share in today's video because it required me to turn off my device and turn it back on. So that's everything I wanted to share in today's video. We covered this update specifically, which was to cover and fix bug fixes. My guess is that the next update that we see is going to be the full official stable launch of Android 16 going to anybody and everybody. It is hopefully going to be out of beta. If there's any other bug fixes that they need to do beyond this one, it's probably just going to be intact with that update of the full official launch. Hopefully there's no other smaller bug fixes and keeping us in beta longer. Hopefully we'll see this update being pushed out within the next week or two. And then we also covered about nine other features that come along with Android 16 through the process from beta one through beta four. Hopefully you guys have appreciated this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, the more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.